Hello Uggies Worldwide, I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question is a comment that was put onto a previous video by Chris Lonsberry. Okay, he says, I'm trying to get my antenna game up to speed. Uh, he has an Alpha Delta DXCC. Okay, the Alpha Delta DXCC has got um, the top wire that has a trap and a trap. Uh, so this is a two band antenna. And then it has from the center a fan and four different, I think three fans total for the uh, higher higher bands. The thing is built like a tank. It is very sturdy, very strong. Okay. Um, okay we're going to go to uh, DX Engineering. Okay, and we're going to look at the DX CC, oops, which is the Alpha De Delta parallel dipole. It's resonant up to 1,000 watts, 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10. Okay, so the traditional hand bands without the work bands. It's all assembled. All you have to do is unroll it. And like I said, it is built like a tank. All right. I know for a fact that it needs to come up off the ground more than it is. Okay, fine, yes. I would say minimum of 20 uh, feet. You can always, if you only have one high centerpiece, you can put it up as an inverted V. So I'm curious about the analyzer. I'm assuming it doesn't care about radiation patterns. Um, that's sort of true. And it's calculating strictly the resonance. So the antenna wouldn't care about antenna height. No, now we've got our, our logic all the way around to where we are 180 out. It does carry, uh, care very much about the antenna height. Um, I don't want to spend $400 plus on something that's not going to work because of a problem I already know I have. Still, I want to dial in whatever antennas I'm using. I'm sure it would be nice to have an analyzer. Let me show you the analyzer. I've got two of them here. They're both very nice. This one right here is from MFJ, uh, MFJ Enterprises. This is the 259 Bravo. I think they're up to the Delta model now. Okay. This right here is a fancier uh, rig expert. It's made in Ukraine. So if you want to support the Ukrainians, this would be something you could buy. This does a nice job of graphing um, what's over here, and you can get some very nice output out of it. This one right here strictly shows, it doesn't do any graphing, it will show a digital representation of the SWR, it'll show the SWR, and then the impedance and very often you find resonance and the impedance is off so you have to compromise a little bit and this particular unit since it tunes anywhere on the hf band and uh, all the way up to it's got a special uh, notch there for two meters you can go across the band and search for the null and i happen to really like that um, let's see how much these are right now wonderful first antenna analyzer we go to uh, again right here it's mfj 259 let's see what we get okay too many it's a d um this is the they're all saying not available i don't know why they're saying not available 280, okay, this is the newest one right here, and it's $349.95. So by the time you pay for shipping and taxes and stuff, you're probably getting up 
into the uh, range you were talking about. Okay. As you said, it's a lot of money to spend for an instrument. Uh, you could get a very nice QRP rig for that amount of money. However, uh, I went many years without an analyzer. Uh, the rigs by then had built-in SWR meters, which are, I wouldn't call them high accuracy meters, but they'll give you an idea. Um, the MFJ has helped me immensely with the antennas. It's the antenna tuner, antenna tuner I turn to, antenna tuner I turn to, to do most of my measurements of antennas. Now, I want to talk about this idea of height above ground. In the ARRL uh, antenna book, number um, 20, 23, 23rd edition, is this chart, figure 215, okay? This is a curve showing the radiation resistance of a horizontal half wavelength dipole at various heights above the ground. Now, this is a perfect ground, but that only matters. This is the non perfect ground, and this is in wavelengths. Now, you've got a little problem because you've got a multi band antenna. So, this is going to work well for one band, but another band will have a different impedance. Notice the difference in impedance here. This is for real ground right here. So 50 ohms when it's barely off the ground and it never hits 50 ohms again. Okay, so you're gonna come up here to 70 ohms and uh, you're going to have trouble uh, finding anything in here. And so height above ground makes a difference in the impedance of what you're looking at. Now half wave impedance gives 70 ohms, but this would then be full wave impedance for something else. Notice it's setting out here around 70. Okay, so the net that we have for this here is the antenna analyzer measures the parameters of an uh, in situ or installed antenna. Moving the antenna up or down or to a different spot will affect SWR in the analyzer to measure that. So what you are measuring, what you are measuring with your antenna tuner is the antenna, the transmission line, and the physical environment that the antenna is in, okay? Because it is putting out noise. It's like setting a speaker out at a party for the DJ. Depending on where the speaker is put, the sound could be muffled on the far side of the room or it could be really sharp, okay? Because the environment affects the radiation aspects of the antenna. So yes, by all means, get the antenna higher. Um, that will help keep your radiation patterns a little bit lower and Height matters and antennas. That's the the first rule is everything affects everything. So that means is that that uh, a concrete fence, the trees, all of that are going to affect the radiation pattern to some degree. And the second rule of antennas: height matters. Get it up as high as you reasonably can. Uh, the ideal height for the center of that antenna at 80 meters is. Uh, half wavelength or 40 meters or 120 feet. Very few hams can do that. So just get it up as high as you can. Now, I have put up numerous antennas uh, using two lengths of chain link fence top rail. Quite inexpensive down at Home Depot or Lowe's. I think at Lowe's you can actually get a single 20 foot length. You can also get these plastic poles that will go up to 30 feet. I don't have a specific recommendation for those. But if you put these together at each end, get both ends up 20 feet off the ground or make it an inverted V or something, uh, you'll have good luck with that antenna. You should be able to talk to quite a few people. Note that as you get up to 10 meters, the optimum height for a 10 meter antenna is a half wavelength, 5 meters. That's 15 whole feet. 
okay? So you can see you're going to get a different radiation pattern for each band. So I hope that helps answer the question. Yes, it does matter. I encourage you to go ahead and get that analyzer. There's lots of analyzers to look at. The ones that have lots of bells and whistles, like this one will give you Smith charts and things like that, which I never use. The thing I always use is simple SWR. Now, I will admit that this antenna analyzer does a great deal more than uh, just um, SWR. It measures cable length. It'll give you oh, all kinds of things that you can do with the one port um, device. Now, there's lots of little things called nano VNAs. Um, they're great if you really know how to use them. The problem is they are not simple to use. They are by far the cheapest antenna analyzer. However, they are by far the most complex to operate. And oh well. So there you have it. If you've watched this far, I ask you to please subscribe to this video, uh, to this channel. And also please click like and share, share this with somebody. Tell them the good news about uh, all the Augies over here. And if you would like to help this channel financially, you can go to decastlercom slash support and you'll find a way via PayPal where you can do one time or recurring. Uh, and also you will find Patreon. And Patreon is easy to get to. It's Patreon slash KE0OG. And that'll get you right into my Patreon. Um, Patreon treats its uh, contributors very well. You can either do an annual or uh, monthly. So, until we next meet, 73.